Hello YouTube, it's Philip Twenty today with solar power, electricity, and electronics. And what we got in front of us is your standard household dryer. This one's really old. Uh, there's parts missing off of it. And I didn't find out there was parts missing off of it until I took it apart. So I want you guys to take a look at what we got here. Um, I'm going to convert this to 110 volts where you can just plug it into any household receptacle. Now, uh, I don't recommend anybody do this on their own, so just take that in consideration. And, you know, do all these things with a, you know, a grain of salt. Don't, uh, don't trust my judgment. Make your own judgment for your own self. So, being that said, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this wiring diagram. Okay, right here is leg one, it says 240 volts, and leg two. So, since we're looking at leg one and leg two right here, okay, you see it? Hard for you to see, let me go up a little. So you got leg one here, leg two here, neutral right here. If you read these lines here, these two lines, this is the power that goes in from your house, okay? So you got leg one is 110 volts, leg two is 110 volts with 180 degrees off phase, and that equals 240 volts. So if we go over here, it says 240 volts. So, and then if you go from leg one right here, it says 110 volts to N, which is neutral, and that is directly connected to your ground as well. It should be. It says, you see this right here? Ground circuit. It's directly connected to ground. Now, this dryer plug doesn't have a ground circuit. So, what they should have done is connected ground to the middle connector. You can't see what I'm talking about. Let me go over here to it. So, this ground plug's only got three connectors. Um, I'll probably end up changing that because there's four wires in the wall and only three connectors here. This ground right here should be attached directly to a ground on a wire. And these three wires should be directly attached where they're at. You got a positive on one side, positive on the other side, negative, uh, neutral leg in the middle. So basically this is hot, hot, and neutral. And uh, these hot connectors have a colored screw so the colored screws is where the hot legs are at and the white screws where the neutral leg is at uh, that's the same way with receptacles too now we're going to modify the way we wire this up it's really not that difficult to understand so I went ahead and made up a connector This is our connector that I'm, I made up. Basically, it's just a couple of terminals with a number 10 gauge wire in between. And I'm going to disconnect this wire and jumper this between the terminals. Now, between the two terminals, see that's 240 volts. It's going in like we talked about on the uh, other circuit. And this is the 110 volts that goes in. This is the neutral leg. So if you was to take this hot leg out right here because this is leg two I've already done tests this is leg two and completely remove it you just take it out electric tape it up to where it's insulated and it's not a danger or threat to anything and then you connect it uh, the circuit that is here to this circuit here so basically we're going to remove this and put this in its place so what it's going to do is allow the heater to draw power through the neutral leg which doesn't have 180 degrees phase it's basically uh, 
connecting it directly like your you know receptacle um, I'm going to demonstrate this and I'm going to demonstrate this on an extension cord I'll be right back when I got the wires connected okay YouTube what I've done is I put a jumper here and here and my hot wire here okay and here's my neutral wire this is number 12 gauge wire okay so you see it is number 12 gauge wire never do this It's not recommended for the uh, people that's not electrically inclined I'm gonna lower the camera here shortly I'm gonna connect through an extension cord here right there there's our extension cord and connect our wires directly there I'm going to go right here this is our heater element this is the wire that goes to it and we're going to check how many amps we're actually drawing from this heater itself and the voltage and we're going to calculate the watt so I'm going to go ahead and connect our meter there we go now our meters connected we've got uh, the dryer modified with number 12 gauge wire now don't get me wrong I've already tested this this thing pumps out around 11 amps or so but I wanted to show you a simpler way to uh, set it up and that way you can understand it now I'm going to run this directly off of my solar system my uh, I'm going to run the uh, dryer directly off of it and show you that it's heating with a thermal imaging camera. So let me get it connected and then I'll be right back. Okay, so what we've got going on is we connected our wires, the neutral leg to a neutral circuit and the hot leg to a hot circuit and we're running it through the 110 volt circuits that go through to the solar power system and I'll show you the uh, the load on the inverter and I'll also show you the amps volts and watts coming out of this system here I don't know if you can see it clearly but hard to see uh, it's a little better so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and I've got it set for four or five minutes bam there we go Go ahead and see here. That there is heat coming out of there. Okay. You can't see the air coming out, but you can see the heat coming out. Uh, it's not a whole lot of heat. And, you know... The fact is, it'd be nice if there was a lot more just started up, so it may take a little bit longer to warm up completely. But on 230 volts, it uh, runs really, really quickly up to the temperature. So, and right now it's about 90 degrees. So you can see the image that heat's coming out. And you can see it's, the dryer is wired in right there with that connector so I mean this connector here is wired in and it's wired in right there it runs up let me go ahead and show you it runs up right there and just so you see there is the connector plugged into nothing 
the connector plugged in nothing. It's a, the black and white wires run up right there, and that's it right there. So we definitely got heat coming out. So now it's up to 90, 91 degrees. Uh, that's not a whole lot of heat. Now this is a scenario. Since I have a family of five, it's not feasible for me to do that because I need a dryer. I need a dryer that's 5,000 watts. We're pulling uh, a lot less than 5,000 watts. You, you got to take that in consideration. Since we're pulling a lot less than 5,000 watts, you know, we're only like 1,500 watts or so, including the motor. So that's like 12, 1,300 watts. But uh, if you run thicker wire to it, the voltage will go up and the amperage will go up some too. Yesterday I had it at 11 amps at a number 10 gauge wire running to the dryer. And uh, that, that's to be expected. Um, you can reduce the uh, power consumption of these dryers. All you got to do is wire it up for 110 volts if you wanted to. I'm not recommending it. It's not engineered that way. If you wanted more uh, heat, you could uh, shorten the uh, heater and it would create more, uh, less resistance through the heater so it will heat up faster and you'll get more amps out of the uh, heater element and that will get it hotter so it'll help you dry but in a uh, shit hits the fan scenario if you don't have grid power you can get a dryer just to keep your clothes cleaned up um, and it's a lot easier that way you can been other time taking care of other things. I mean, but uh, I mean, a clothesline is the cheapest route to dry your clothes. Period. You, know, you can even hang clothes up inside your house, and they'll dry inside. But you know, inside of this, it's going to stay you know above 100 degrees. Uh, once it reaches temperature, it's going to heat up. But you know, it is, it is what it is. So. And right now, let's look again. It might not stay above 100. It's 96 degrees. That's that's fairly warm. That's going to knock off the chill and you know help remove the humidity inside the system. And you know, evaporation is the fastest way to remove moisture, anyways. Um, that's how your moisture is removed is evaporation. This would make it more efficient to run. But in all real world perspective, this takes a lot longer to dry your clothes. So instead of running, you know, a pair of pants, a shirt, and a towel, and underwear and socks for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're going to run it for 20, 35, 40 minutes. Now, I haven't tested it, and that's what, uh, you know, I'm going to test it right now. Let's, let's, uh, I'm going to get some pants. Underwear, socks, and a t-shirt. And we're going to test how long it takes to dry it at 110 volts. Okay, I've let it run for about 30 minutes. The buzzer turned off, and I want to show you the temperature of the clothes. Right now, they're about 81. The coldest spot is uh, 80. And 81. And let's go ahead and do the clothes. Now these are special kind of pants here. These are called SOG pants. They uh, dry up really fast. These are basically uh, ready to wear. Now I highly recommend SOG. They're really good pants. They dry really fast. They're also water repellent. So, you know, it de depending on the type of clothes you get, this will be uh, just fine now the cl the rags are still slightly damp you know I put them in there right after I, they was ringing wet uh, I can show you the temperature difference because the evaporation will remove heat you can see right here that's showing 80 degrees and that's showing 79 degrees or so Right, the pile is 79. Yeah, the the 
the rag is 79 right there. But yeah, the, the pants is a little bit warmer, but the pants dry quickly because they're water repelling clo uh, clothing. Um, and here's my t-shirt. It's still slightly damp. It still needs to run. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, pants out because they're they're done. And then I'll put it on 30 minutes again. So, we're going to run it for 30 more minutes and we'll see what happens here shortly. Okay, I'm back YouTube. And I wanted to show you uh, again. Um, it's been 30 minutes of run time again. And the, the clothes are getting uh, much more dry. Now the shirt, it's just a regular t-shirt. It's the most damp. The rags are getting a lot drier. They're almost dry. Underwear is good to go. So our pants and our underwear is good. But the rags and the shirt is still wet. I want to show you the temperature we've got. Okay, so you see that's the pile of clothes and we've got 81 degrees on the shirt 80 degrees on the right side it's damper on the right than the left if you remove the shirt let's take a look at the the rags are actually warmer uh, no wait, 80 degrees on the right 80 on the left and 81 on the front so it's obviously drying and uh, it definitely consumes less power uh, in a factor. Um, I think we're pulling somewhere a little bit over a thousand watts. I'm going to do one more test with amps and then we'll, we'll find, we're going to do one more test with the amps with the dryer running completely off of uh, the motor and everything. So let's go ahead and put that all those clothes back in there and then test what we're going to be running in reality so in reality a hundred percent of the amps is going to go through these wires and that's where I'm going to test that I was doing the standard test of here so we got right now running at 12.8 amps okay so since we're running 12.8 amps let's check the voltage here volts at 12.8 amps so you're looking at 12.8 uh, times 109 which is the watts so you do 12.8 multiplied by 109 you're going to have our watts and uh, I mean I think you're using less power you're definitely using less power it's not convenient it's not uh, doing a lot of heat real fast so, you know, it's circulating clothes a lot more. It's, you know, wearing your clothes out even faster. I'm going to have an experiment where I'm going to try to remove the moisture out of the clothes without tumbling them, drying them with a dryer, without using any heat. I'm going to use uh, a vacuum pump on the tank, and I want to see how that works. I'm going to cut one of my refrigerant tanks open and use a vacuum pump on it, and uh, see how it works. I've got some empty tanks. It's not going to cost me any money if I destroy them. And uh, what I'll do is I'll test those out. And if they work out, I'm going to build a bigger one and use it on my clothes because it's never being tumbled or uh, beaten to death. So, you know, I might have to iron the clothes. But we'll have to find out when we get to that point. This is filled 20 with solar panel, electricity, and electronics. And I'm trying to come up with a ways to live efficiently. And I'll holler at y'all later.